Systems thinking is a key skill for 21st century product design. To better understand this important idea, I assembled a panel of system thinkers. Raf Koster, the game designer behind such pioneering games as Ultima Online and Star Wars Galaxies. Mike Sellers, a pioneering MMO designer turned professor at Indiana University. Dan Olson, an engineer designing submarines turned expert in lean product development. I enjoyed this conversation so much. Check it out and make sure to stay tuned to the end to get your free systems thinking cheat sheet with tips you can use right away to save time and build better products. Now we have up here two game designers and a submarine designer. Okay. And if you think uh, <laughs> submarines have systems, you're correct. So Raf, how about you? How do you think about this and engage with it? Systems thinking in your own practice. You know those mobiles that we hang over, over baby cribs? Mm -hmm. Systems to me are like that. Yeah. Um, okay. They're driven more by the connections than they are by the things. So they're more about the relationships. They're more about, a mobile is more about the strings than the things that you hang on the strings. And a user is an awful lot like a baby who's whacking part of it. <laughs> <laughs> and everything wiggles, right? That's the key thing. Everything wiggles. And to me, that's what a system is. It, because it's about those relationships and the ways in which things ripple through them in unexpected ways. So Mike Sellers is actually writing a book on systems thinking and game design. So Mike, tell us about why you chose the, that topic and what systems thinking means to you. So I, I, I firmly believe that uh, games are systems and that systems thinking is incredibly important for us all. Systems thinking is to the 21st century what literacy was to the 20th century. That you can get by in the first few decades of the century without really understanding systems, although already we're seeing that if you don't, you're at a disadvantage. And pretty soon, I think, if you really don't get systems, you're not going to be able to, to live and work well in our society. This is true of everything from um, you know, big issues like climate change and um, you know, financial crises or, or things like that, all the way down to um, how does it work? You know, why, why are things arranged the way they are in my grocery store? There, and there are systems all around us. And the problem is, once you start thinking this way, you see them everywhere. Anything that persists, any grouping that persists and has looping relationships between the, the parts of it is a thing. So my marriage is a thing. My family is a thing. The university I belong to is a thing. The university was there 100 years ago, and no one who's there now was there then, but the university has persisted across time. Um, so there, we, we see things and systems all around us in ways we don't really realize. One of the best ways to be a system thinker is build a feedback loop, build a simple feedback loop. It's the simplest possible system. A classic example I'd use, you're all familiar enough with like soccer, right? Yeah. Two teams, kick a ball back and forth, it's gotta go in a goal. It, a simple feedback is in there, which is, hey, I kick the ball into the goal on, on that side, I'm now winning, yay, great. Um, but it's so easy to break that system entirely. Let's say that every time you kick the ball into the goal, you lose a member off your team, right? So your team is going to lose capability as you succeed. This is actually a, a classic system that what it leads to is, oh, now I'm less powerful, so the other guy will, will do better, but then he's gonna lose something, and pretty soon you're gonna converge together, and, and you'll achieve a kind of balance with nobody left on the field, and it'll come down to one person left, and they'll win. If you say, each time I score a goal, I gain a person on my team, something completely different happens, right? right? That team starts to dominate massively, and then there are too many people on the field, and then that blows to hell, right? <laughs> And these have names, you know, positive and negative feedback loops. And you start learning those, um, those patterns, right? You start learning to see them intuitively um, until eventually you can walk up to a system and tell some poor junior designer, yeah, that's not gonna work. And they go, why? And you go, oh, shit. Um, <laughs> 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 Let yeah. me find a napkin and... <laughs> 
And then, right. it, and then it can literally take hours. If, if I may, that's, that's one of the turning points that I see with students where that we have this exact same interaction. This is not going to work. Why? It looks great. And I thought of it, so it must be great, right? Right. And I, I try and explain to them, and they don't get it, and they don't get it. And at some point, hopefully, the light bulb goes on. And they go, oh, now I understand. That's going to be a runaway, and this is going to go into the dirt. Uh, and, and the game is broken. <laughs> I got trained in engineering where you better get it right or you better model the causality right or else bad things happen. Like we, we, we heavily tried to avoid positive feedback loops when it came to nuclear reactors, right? That's a, yeah, that's we, had, we had negative <laughs> feedback loops deliberately for that. Right. Um, but yeah, so for me, it's about modeling and can right. you understand causality and can you see causality? Like it basically becomes like a causality, like how, do you have blindness or do you not, right? And it's the same thing in products you guys do in games. So I'll go up to the product and be like, Gosh, like a very small percentage of people are going to get through that reg page. Like, why? Why? It's like, well, I've seen enough reg pages, and you have too many forms, and you're, you know, and, and you're not validating it, and all this jazz. You can you start to form mental models. Uh, just curious. Um, each of you mentioned um, at different points. Maybe you look at it like a junior designer, and you, you're looking at it from a system standpoint. Can you give an example of what it looks like? You know, what that broken loop might look like for those of us not familiar with it. I have a great example of a broken loop. Scott and I uh, worked on this together. And it's really simple, so I think it's very accessible for you. Um, so we were working for a, um, a brain games company, and they wanted to uh, do some uh, marketing and PR and outreach, and they decided that they would, since Scott is a world-class puzzle designer, they decided they would put some puzzles in their newsletter, in their emails. And so he designed some really great puzzles and then said, OK, and here's the page where you click through and give what you think that your answer is to the puzzle, the feedback loop, right? So here's the puzzle. The puzzle shows up in the newsletter. You click through, and then you can say your answer, and then it'll show you if you were right or wrong. And the team said, well, that's nice, but we want to MVP it, so we're just going to put the puzzle <laughs> in the, wait, maybe you know where I'm going. They're just going to put the puzzle in the newsletter, and we're going to see how people respond to that, and if they respond well, then we'll make the answer page. <laughs> I kid you not. So those of you who are paying attention know where this goes. They send out the newsletter. It gets like 42% click rate because people are like, a puzzle! And then... They click through and they just go to like a sign up for our site. They don't they they don't see the answer to they don't they don't see the punchline, and they and and then they didn't they didn't did they sign up and pay? No, they did not because they were pissed <laughs> because they were like what? And then the conclusion of the team was well that experiment showed us we're kind of puzzled because there were these really high click through rates but then nobody signed up so we think that that you know that the puzzles didn't work. <laughs> you know I said but you have a broken feedback loop. <laughs> and they're like, what's a feedback loop? And then I was uh, like, Ugh. Yeah. Do you, do you remember the murders <laughs> in the murder count in uh, Ultima? No, so do tell. There were <laughs> tell us about the murder so count. So this was a, uh, this okay. was. Uh, Is this a broken feedback uh, loop? Yeah, uh, this okay. was players in the, in the game could kill each other. This was a fantasy world. Right. But we wanted to incentivize good behavior. So if another player ambushed you in the woods and s killed you and st took your stuff, you could report them to the guards and, and even put a, a, a prize money on their head so that they oh, could the be caught. Oh, the bounty system. The bounty system. The bounty system. And so... Uh, you know, this would and then incentivize other players to go hunt down the bad guy, right, to claim the bounty. Instead, you know, when you went downtown, you saw this conveniently posted high score table of the best killers in the game. <laughs> and they tried really hard to be at the top. So they would go out there and kill in the most insulting, humiliating, <laughs> egregious way possible so they'd get the biggest bounty next to their name so they, they'd be at the top of this high score table that we had conveniently made for them. Oops. <laughs> so it's easy to give a, the, the unintentional feedback. So Dan, you have a different take on systems. And I know that you yeah. use systems in your, uh, just from talking to you, I know that as a product designer, you're a systems thinker. Not everybody is. And I think this all started when you were working on submarines in the That's Navy. So tell us about how that got you into system thinking and then how that comes out now in your practice. Yeah. 
Building a submarine is very complex. It's like the, mm -hmm. it was great to work on a complex product early in my career because I was just kind of okay. And working in a place that had figured out how to work on that before I got there. It's not like I came. I just came in like here's here's how we do this. You know, here's how we work on this. So it was started by uh, Hyman Rickover, father of the nuclear navy. Like in the 40s when nuclear power was first coming out, he realized, hey, you know. These submarines that we have, they're based on diesel power. They can only go so far, but they have to refuel. And he said, hey, if we can take nuclear power, then they don't have to refuel. They can go all over the place. And so he built this organization that had a great culture and great processes for how to do this. So I walked in there, and it was basically a matrix. Everyone understood the matrix. They knew how it worked, you know. And we actually, one of the things we did, just to illustrate it, for any given thing, I worked in my, the name of my section was actually system. It was like a system shop. <laughs> and then there were component shops. And like they would build the major components, like a pump or a reactor or okay. whatever it was, right? And then there was like a material science one. Like, so there was like these different functional groups. And we all had to, when we built a system, it was my job to understand what are the requirements for the system. And then go around, and I had to get formal sign-off. We called it concurrence. Like, say you were the materials person, you're the components person. I have to be like, here's what I think we should do with the system. Amy Joe, do you agree? And if you're like, no, I don't think that's right, I'd have to work it through with you until you're like, okay, now I believe the material design is sound. And you would say, now I believe the component design is sound. And we're doing a new, a new submarine. We'd have like 10 different departments that would have to agree, and you'd have to go around you know, and it's just like, it's funny, it's good prep for PM, right? No one reports to you, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Nobody reports true. to you. you gotta I got to get you to sign, right? And, and it's wow. interesting. I got to convince you that what I'm proposing is going to meet the requirements in the sound. And it reminds me of my favorite motto, which you guys know Spider-Man's motto, right? With great power great comes power. great power. Right. You know the product manager motto? With great responsibility comes no power. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that's how I well, You have to go around and just convince people. So I got used to basically doing evidence-based and convincing people to do that. If I am the creative director of a game like, you know, Ultima Online or Star Wars Galaxies, I mean, it, it, a conservative guess at the number of individual features in Star Wars Galaxies is probably on the order of 10,000. My job is to actually know all of them and what they make wiggle. That's what my right. job actually right. is. I don't need to know how each piece is built but I need to understand all the relationships so that I can say, hey, if I snip the string here because we're cutting this feature, the whole thing doesn't go won't, right? <laughs> and uh, sometimes it leads to really unintuitive places. Uh, in Star Wars, we launched without land speeders because it turned out land speeders were optional. Nothing broke if they weren't there. People just moved more slowly, <laughs> right? Whereas it turned out it wasn't optional, we could not cut cantina dancers. If we cut cantina dancers, the whole thing fell apart, right? Right. And, and you know, that sounds completely counterintuitive, and yet it was proven true. That is actually how we launched, and we were able to, we had a roadmap, and we patched in land speeders. It was only within three months, so it was not fiction. And, and it worked. <laughs> I think what happens, especially in bigger orgs and bigger products, is one team or one person will only work on one part of it, and I think Intrinsic in system thinking is you're getting your arms around the whole thing. You're whole attempting thing, right? yeah. to get your yeah. arms around the whole thing. And like you said, you may not have the detailed knowledge of all the details of how things are built, but you're able to articulate to someone else, hey, there's these major components and here's the causality between yeah. them, right? And that happens all the time. I, I see, so I see that where PMs will go, well, I made my part of the thing better, but then something else got worse. Someone They didn't realize, because they didn't have a big enough context, they didn't understand the, the causality and the connections with others. Yeah. Wow. So. It's really all about looking at the relationships between things rather than the things themselves. Yes. To get your free systems thinking cheat sheet with tips you can use right now, go to gamethinking.io slash systems. The link is in the description.